Welcome to Sharing Our Gifts, produced by Catholic Charities. Sharing Our Gifts is part three of the Catholic Disaster Preparedness Program video training series, which also includes part one, preparing individuals and families, and part two, parish disaster planning. If you participated in parish disaster planning, you know that it focuses on developing plans to protect and continue the essential functions of the parish. Sharing our gifts builds upon those foundational parish preparedness concepts. This video will cover six main topics. The parish is a visible sign of God's love and compassion in the community. What to expect after a disaster event. Partners that serve the community during response and recovery. Ways a parish might serve after a disaster. Assessing what the parish may be able to offer in terms of time, talent, and resources. And maintaining readiness to serve when needed. The participant guide for today's training includes a summary of the video content, worksheets for in-class learning activities, references, and resources to use later when preparing for your parish to share its gifts. We will begin with an opening prayer called Live in My Life, written by the Stewardship Office of the Diocese of Kansas City, Kansas. Lord, I invite you to live in my life today. Here is my face, smile through it. Here is my mouth, speak to someone with it. Here are my ears, listen to someone with them. Here is my heart, love someone with it. Here are my hands, touch someone with them. Here are my arms, hug someone with them. Here are my feet, Walk with them this day. The parish as a visible sign of God's love and compassion in the community. Our parishes offer spiritual care, love, acceptance, fellowship, and assistance to members and non-members every day. Father Tom Ryan speaks of how Our Lady of Victories in Sayreville, New Jersey, his parish during Superstorm Sandy, was a visible sign of God's love and compassion to those affected. On a nice sunny day, a Catholic parish is known for caring for the needs of the less fortunate in a local community, often with food and other concrete services. During a disaster, the residents of that community turn to the parish with their new needs. During Hurricane Sandy, the parishioners of Our Lady of Victory's church, together with many local organizations, reached out to respond to the needs of the residents of the borough of Sayreville. For some, this was the first time they found themselves in a situation to ask for help. They felt comfortable, yet embarrassed to seek assistance. Many others, in particular the poor and the vulnerable, knew that they could turn to the parish for help. What to expect after a disaster event. Catholic Charities USA defines disasters as occurrences of situations that cause human suffering or create human needs that survivors cannot alleviate without assistance. The human needs created by a disaster are determined by both the impacts of the event and the availability of resources to assist survivors in their recovery. Many people think that the government has the capability to protect the population and meet all needs after a disaster event, and that is a dangerous assumption to make. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, continually states that individuals and families need to expect to sustain themselves for a minimum of 72 hours. Local governments often do not have the resources to respond to a large event and may request help from neighboring communities. The local emergency management agency can only request help from the state when local resources are inadequate. State government may provide additional resources such as National Guard support to aid an affected community. 
If state resources become exhausted too, the governor can request additional support from FEMA. When the request for federal assistance is made, assessments are conducted to determine the impact and needs of affected communities. If the assessments result in a recommendation that the state should receive federal assistance, the President of the United States will approve a disaster declaration for specific jurisdictions in the affected state. Usually, this includes assistance to reimburse states for emergency measures and for damage to public infrastructure under the FEMA Public Assistance Program. When there are casualties and significant uninsured damages, the declaration may include assistance for individuals and families under the FEMA Individual Assistance Program. Sometimes communities within a declared state do not meet the threshold for federal assistance and are not eligible to receive federal resources. Even if your state receives a disaster declaration, it will likely be weeks after the event before federal resources come to individuals in need. And many times, there is no federal disaster declaration leaving the community to recover with its own resources. More details on this process and federal disaster assistance are described in the Catholic Charities USA video entitled Disaster Basics on CCUSA's Disaster Training Video Library on YouTube. The link to Disaster Basics is included in your participant guide. When immediate life safety has been established, the process of recovery can begin. Disaster recovery needs change over time and depend on circumstances. During prolonged events like raging wildfires or slow rising floods, and after events like tornadoes, earthquakes, and hurricanes have ended, the community may experience immediate need to assist multiple individuals and families. This is called mass care, or assistance to affected residents that includes sheltering, feeding, bulk distribution of subsistence goods, and reunification assistance. Other immediate needs, such as emergency financial assistance, debris removal, securing property, emotional and spiritual care, pet sheltering, and insurance or legal concerns will also demand attention and resources. Partners that serve during response and recovery who are the community partner organizations that help when disaster strikes? During the actual emergency response, the agencies that minimize the risk of personal injury and property loss are official organizations such as first responders and emergency management officials, departments of transportation and public works, and emergency response volunteers that have been trained as part of the local community emergency response team. Sometimes in catastrophic events, the federal government may declare an emergency or major disaster before or while the event occurs, and national resources may assist in disaster response. After immediate life safety has been established, more partners engage to meet human services needs during the response and early recovery phase. Some, but not all, of the well-known disaster relief agencies with national and local elements are Catholic Charities, Knights of Columbus, St. Vincent de Paul, Adventist Community Services, American Red Cross, Convoy of Hope, and Feed the Children the Humane Society, Lutheran Disaster Response, the Salvation Army, and Southern Baptist Disaster Relief Services. Local Human Services Organizations, for example, Community Action Agencies, Community Mental Health Providers, and local and regional food banks are also part of the emergency response and early recovery phase. During intermediate and long-term recovery, Many of these groups continue to assist survivors in the community. Other agencies specialize in meeting recovery needs. 
If there has been a disaster declaration, federal agencies offer assistance during recovery to eligible individuals and communities. FEMA, the Small Business Administration, and the Department of Housing and Urban Development are typically involved, and others may be, depending on the disaster circumstances. The National Flood Insurance Program and other disaster insurers process claims to further the recovery of policyholders. During long-term recovery, relief organizations and partners like parishes may continue to assist community members by securing financing and helping find resources through donations and volunteer work teams. Voluntary organizations that focus on intermediate and long-term recovery assistance include Catholic Charities, the Mennonite Disaster Service, Habitat for Humanity, Chamber of Commerce, United Way, Legal Aid, and the United Methodist Committee on Relief, known as UMCOR. Many of the non-government agencies that provide disaster relief services have joined organizations called VOADs, or Voluntary Organizations Active in Disasters. VOAD structures exist at every level of jurisdiction, including states, territories, regions, and even in communities, where they may be called COADs. VOAD and COAD groups work together to coordinate their efforts after disaster to maximize assistance to those in need. Catholic Charities USA is an active member agency of the National VOAD. Most Catholic Charities agencies participate on the state and local level, with many holding leadership positions. Special Relationship with Catholic Charities Catholic parishes have a natural connection with Catholic Charities, and this relationship is particularly beneficial in times of disaster. After life safety needs have been addressed, parishes can immediately reach out for guidance and or support through the diocese or directly to their local Catholic Charities Agency. Serving the nation's poor and vulnerable regardless of faith and advocating on their behalf, we are Catholic Charities. When a disaster occurs, Catholic Charities agencies have access to job aids and tools for performing quick assessments of survivor needs and demographics, and access to the bishop to intercede on behalf of hard-hit parishes. The local Catholic Charities Agency will likely have completed a rapid disaster assessment as part of its disaster operations protocol. Catholic Charities responds early and assists the poor and vulnerable throughout recovery. Across the U.S., Catholic Charities responds to disasters by providing needed supplies, such as food, water, hygiene kits, tarps, tools, and cleanup supplies. Depending on the need, Catholic Charities may also provide immediate basic services such as crisis counseling, spiritual care, information and referral, and disaster casework. Catholic Charities agencies are involved in both short-term and long-term recovery activities. Short-term recovery assistance may include cleanup and cleaning kits other resources that help families get back into homes, and continued assistance with immediate needs like food and shelter. Long-term, through disaster case management services, Catholic Charities agencies help clients plan and pursue recovery. Here is an example of services Catholic Charities has provided in a real disaster. My name is Elaine Seavey, and just want to share with you uh, a couple of uh, events that, uh, tragic events that occurred and uh, uh, just the love and admiration that I have felt from Catholic Charities. Uh, back in April of 2016, whenever we had a storm here in Houston, 
a humongous tree, 12 foot in diameter, uh, fell on top of my mobile home and crushed it and the majority of it as well as my automobile. After making many, many telephone calls, I did get this telephone call from Catholic Charities and uh, I, I, I was just immediately overwhelmed. She made furniture available to me while I was seeking to get my mobile home repaired. Um, it was just totally unexpected. It, it was just helped me such a huge, huge uh, amount because I had gone through such a dramatic ordeal throughout these many months. Also, I was just fighting cancer and that's what kind of just doubled it up because the doctor told me that uh, cancer had returned. And as I'm trying to rebuild my mobile home, I moved into an apartment then here now in 2017, Hurricane Harvey hit. I, I left the, mo uh, the apartment where I was staying at just prior hours before the actual storm hit. And then it was uh, three days later before I could return and to find that water had indeed flooded the apartment um, quite a few inches. And what I was able to salvage from my mobile home was now wiped out by Harvey. Miss Maria from Catholic Charity, she just calls me up one day and says, hey Elaine, just checking on you. Um, just want to know how you're doing for, with uh, Harvey, if that was an issue for you. And I, I told her yes, and then we talked a little bit more, and she said, well, she says, you just cannot stay in that wet, moldy apartment. And so she says, I'm going to call you back in a few minutes, and you're going to be in a hotel tonight. Then uh, Ms. Maria made it possible for me to come into this apartment of, as to where we are today right now. And I do have access to this apartment, the ability to live here for the next three months. Um, I'm blessed with uh, rent free and uh, the utilities are being paid for by Catholic Charities. I don't know what else to say other than a, Catholic Charities is just a genuine blessing in the utmost degree and um, I will forever be grateful to Catholic Charities. Forever grateful. Catholic Charities may arrange for the bishop to visit impacted areas to gain a better understanding of the extent of the damage and to serve as a visual reminder that the church is ever-present, walking in solidarity with those impacted. The agency may partner with the diocese or a parish to arrange for community mass or a prayer service for responders, survivors, and disaster casualties. Activity Identifying Local Partners in Disaster Response and Recovery When the video is paused, refer to the worksheet in the participant guide. Individually or with other participants, answer these questions for future reference. What organizations do you expect to have a role in disaster response and recovery in your community? Does your parish have any kind of pre-disaster relationship with them? When planning a post-disaster role for your parish, remember you will not be alone in your efforts. Coordinate with Catholic Charities and others in the community so resources are multiplied, not duplicated, which leaves other survivors in need. Ways the Parish Might Serve After a Disaster In the FEMA guidance, engaging faith-based and community organizations, local emergency management agencies are reminded that faith-based sectors have a wide spectrum of resources that can help make communities more resilient. Catholic parishes that have resources or gifts and a willingness to support others in the parish and the greater community can participate through Catholic charities separately or as part of a whole community effort. There are many ways a parish may serve. Here are some ideas to consider. Conduct wellness check-ins with parishioners and others. Respond to requests for emotional and spiritual care. Partner to host a disaster shelter or a pet-friendly disaster shelter. Train volunteers to support sheltering operations in the community. Host a point of distribution or pod on the church campus to distribute food and supplies or support one elsewhere by sending appropriate volunteers. 
Support debris removal efforts by having a cadre of volunteers. Use currently unused space to store disaster supplies for the community. Raise donations to send to your local Catholic Charities Agency to aid in their efforts. Your parish priest and Eucharistic ministers can provide spiritual and emotional care to community members in need. Further into disaster recovery, a parish may want to offer support for the long-term recovery of individuals and families in the community. With its expertise in disaster case management, Catholic Charities is the best source of guidance on how to do this. And at some point, planning and hosting a disaster appreciation event to support the hard work of disaster survivors and or responders may be greatly appreciated by all. These suggestions and others are listed in the participant guide. Activity. Suggesting disaster roles for your parish. Please turn to this activity in the participant guide. A worksheet is provided for identifying post-disaster activities that might be a good fit for your parish. The worksheet also includes space for brainstorming other ideas. When the video is paused, work individually or with fellow parishioners to record your ideas. Assessing Parish Gifts of Time, Talent, and Resources A parish can decide, long before a disaster occurs, how it can best contribute to community disaster relief. Reaching out to collaborate with Catholic Charities as you plan can help you develop a comprehensive response to a community disaster. In addition to having interest and good intentions, the parish must perform a candid assessment of capabilities to perform disaster services. This assessment enables the parish to identify services it could perform if the disaster occurred this week, what it can organize to be able to perform in the future, and what might simply be out of reach. The assessment can be shared with Catholic Charities, the local emergency management organization, and any voluntary organizations that may be parish partners during disaster response and recovery. A sample organizational capabilities assessment form is included in the participant guide. It is an excerpt from FEMA's Engaging Faith-Based and Community Organizations. Activity Assessing Parish Capabilities when the video is paused, turn to the Organizational Capabilities Assessment form in the Participant Guide. Individually or as a group, complete the assessment to the best of your ability. Another option is to reconvene later to complete the assessment when you have more time and more information available. Maintaining readiness to serve. The parish must be operational before it can help others. As described in the parish disaster planning videos, parishes need both an emergency operations plan and a continuity of operations plan. These plans include goals and objectives for protecting life safety and for maintaining essential parish functions. Similarly, when the parish determines what gifts it intends to offer to the community during disaster response and recovery, it can decide what steps must be taken to ensure that those commitments can be fulfilled. Contact Catholic Charities for training, activities, and guidance related to disaster operations. If at any time your parish is challenged and unable to move forward in your efforts, support is available to you. Connect with local emergency management to explore or enhance a partnership. Ask Catholic Charities or local emergency management officials if a collaborative effort is occurring in your community. If so, introduce your parish and its preparedness, response, and or recovery activities. If there's not a group currently discussing the post-disaster needs of the people in your community, Become an advocate to do so. Wrap up. 
When you begin or resume your efforts to define a role for your parish after a disaster, remember that the participant guide includes a synopsis of the video contents and resources to assist you. Sharing Our Gifts and the entire Catholic Disaster Preparedness Program was produced by Catholic Charities to prepare as Catholic individuals and families for disasters and emergencies. Prepare as Catholic parishes so that our sacraments and services will be available to those recovering. And prepare as Catholic members of the community to help all our neighbors in time of crisis. For more information, contact your local Catholic Charities office or visit Catholic Charities USA at catholiccharitiesusa.org or call 703-549-1390.